In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the word though as it is used in everyday casual conversations by native English speakers. Are we though? That'd be cool though. Listen to this story about my weekend and take note of the way I am using though in this story. This weekend, my family and I made plans to go to the beach. We decided to wake up super early on Saturday so that we could spend the entire day at the beach. I checked the forecast on Friday and it said that it would be warm and sunny all day. But when I woke up, it was gray and cloudy. It wasn't raining though, so we decided to head out anyway. The second thing that didn't really go to plan was the traffic. Normally, it only takes 45 minutes to get to the beach. This morning, it took three hours though. By the time we finally got to the beach, we were all annoyed from the long car ride and the bad weather. But it turned out to be an amazing day though. We had so much fun. It wasn't crowded at all, and the sun even came out by the afternoon. The word though in this story is being used as an adverb. When we use though as an adverb at the end of a sentence, it has a similar meaning to the word but. It is used to contrast something that we or someone else said previously. Let's look at the examples of this in my story. I said, it was gray and cloudy. It wasn't raining though. Our first sentence, it was gray and cloudy, is a negative statement. It's something that we weren't particularly happy about. The second part says, it wasn't raining though. This is a positive thing if you are going to the beach, so it is contrasting my first sentence. You could say the same thing using but, you could say, it was gray and cloudy, but it wasn't raining. When we use though at the end of the sentence, we are really trying to emphasize the contrast between our previous statement. This is extremely common in casual speech. In fact, you will likely hear though more often than you hear but in a similar type situation. Let's look at our second example from the story. Normally, it takes 45 minutes to get to the beach. This morning, it took three hours though. I have my first part, it normally takes 45 minutes. It's not a very long drive, it's a pretty short drive to the beach. But this morning, it was a three hour drive. So I want to emphasize that it is not the same as it normally is. It's normally 45 minutes. Today, it was three hours though. Our third example from the story says, we were all annoyed from the long car ride and the bad weather, but it turned out to be an amazing day though. In the first half of the sentence, I am emphasizing that the morning started off terribly. We had a lot of traffic, the weather wasn't so good, but I want to emphasize that the day was not the same as the, I expected it to be. So I'm using though at the end to contrast this first sentence. We had an amazing day though. Notice in this sentence, I am using both but and though. While you should definitely not use this in any formal writing, it is extremely common in spoken English to use both but and though, even though they have the same meaning. In this sentence, we are emphasizing our contrast. We are emphasizing that the day was quite different than what we had expected or how it had started, but it was an amazing day though. But money would still be nice though. Now I want to look at a few other common situations where we use the word though in casual conversation. Sometimes we use the word though to imply contrast or to imply something negative. Look at this example. I love her outfit today. Her hair though. In this example, you have a positive statement. I love her outfit today. Then you have a second part of this that seems maybe incomplete. Her hair though. Since we know the first part of the sentence is positive, I love her outfit. 
In the second part, we are using though to emphasize that we feel negatively about something, but we don't want to be so blunt about it. We're trying to be more subtle with our rude remark. This is saying, because we have the though, that we feel negatively about the way her hair looks today. Her hair though. Ew. That hat though. Let's look at this next example for another common usage of though. Your friend asks, would you like a coffee? You say, nah, I'm good, thanks though. The though here is just used to emphasize that we are still thankful for your offer even though we said no. No was our negative sentence. And then thank you is our positive sentence. So they are still showing contrast. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you, though. You might hear something similar. Do you want to come to the barbecue on Saturday? Sorry, I'm busy. Thank you for the invitation, though. We are rejecting the offer, but we are also thankful for the offer. So we added the though at the end to emphasize that we are still appreciative of the offer. Not right now. Thank you, though. Another common way that I hear and use though is with this expression. Seriously, though. No, but seriously, though. There are three common ways that this is used. Imagine that you are working on a project with some colleagues. You're all chatting and laughing about your weekends, catching up casually. Then you say, seriously though, let's work on our assignment. In this case, you are having a lighthearted and casual conversation, but you want to bring the conversation back to something more serious. So you say, seriously though, let's finish our project. You were joking and now you want to emphasize that you need to be serious now. More seriously though. Seriously though can also be used as a question. Perhaps you and your friend are chatting, having a lighthearted conversation, and then your friend suddenly says, you know, I'm thinking about quitting my job. This statement is kind of different than the other things that you were talking about. So your response, because you are surprised, seriously though, in general, if you use seriously though as a question, it implies surprise. You are emphasizing that you are not really expecting your friend to say that. Oh, seriously though? The third way that you can use seriously though is to show agreement with something. This is a little peculiar as it kind of contradicts the idea of showing contrast to a previous part of the conversation. But let's look at an example of this. Your friend says, Ugh, it's so hot outside today. You want to emphasize that you agree with your friend. So you say, seriously though. Seriously though. Let's look at one more common way that we use though in casual conversation. Take a look at this conversation. Your friend says, that movie was so good. You didn't feel quite the same and you don't really think your friend's opinion is right. So you say, was it though? In this situation, you are using the though to express skepticism or doubt about something that was said previously. Your friend thought the movie was good, but you want to question the validity of this statement. Oh my gosh, I did. No, did you though? Uh Here is another example of this very common situation. Your friend says, I'm always on time for everything. You want to disagree with your friend, so you say, are you though? In this sentence, you are doubting what your friend said without saying, you're wrong, you're never on time. So you say it in a more subtle way, but you're emphasizing that you feel the opposite of what they're saying. This is an extremely common usage of though. Are you though? In general, the word though is used almost excessively in North American English. You could improve though. So learning it will help you sound more natural when you're speaking English and help you to better understand casual conversations 
in English. I'm just super tired from walking though. I hope that this lesson has helped you get a better idea of how we use though in casual conversations and hopefully it will help you feel more comfortable and confident using it yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.